Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, so I got a request the other day to do an FED element on Airtime Hill. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I hadn't really considered doing an Airtime Hill tutorial uh, before because I thought they were uh, kind of obvious. But then I need to remember that some people are really new to FED in general. Um, and they have uh, problems just doing some stuff that... Uh, the rest of us might take for granted so I'm glad to help out and show somebody how to do an airtime hill I'll try to do a, a few different types here so you get an idea of how it's done but I think this also serves as a good lesson in just the basics of FED so if anyone has any questions about how to do something basic like a drop or something like that just let me know and I will be happy to do it but you see what we've done so far is uh, I just created the lift uh, and then I did a curve. Whoops, I got hold on a second here. Did a curve at the top, and then we started the actual force section. We went down to about, uh, I think, negative one actually. I'm trying to do just a standard sort of intimate drop here. Let's see, what do we get to? Yeah, about negative one right there. And then we're down to about three point at the bottom. We are at 3.6 G's, I think. So fairly standard. Yeah, 3.686, you can see right here. You can do 3.5, whatever you want to do. Depends on what kind of coaster you're building. So you see that we went up to positive right here. We're in positive territory. So for the most part, doing an airtime hill is very, very simple. You just go from positive to negative using a cubic function. Or uh, you can use a quartic function as well. But in this instance, we're going to use a cubic. So first, we'll just do something that resembles uh, an intimate airtime hill, I think. So... What you'll find in this and in most FED is it's really just about where you start transitions between elements that determines how it looks at the end. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So we've got this hole right here, 2.1 seconds of 3.686 Gs. That looks extremely round. I probably wouldn't uh, leave it like this if I were actually doing something. It's probably not going to end up like this. But let's go ahead and hit append. And we've got a new four section here. <clears throat> uh, so all we have to do to make an airtime hill, and this is really simple, is uh, take the the G's down to wherever we want them. So we can either have, you can see over here it's going down. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see it's either going down right there, it's about zero, or we can take it down even further. So let's do an intimate airtime hill first. Let's make something that looks like an intimate. So we'll take it down to about negative 0.8. And then if we append uh, and make that a little bit longer, now you see this looks nothing like an intimate airtime hill. But that's just because the lead up into it is just a little bit too long. So if we take this down by a few seconds, you start to see more of an intimate airtime hill shape, particularly if you leave it about right there, or say 1.75. <clears throat> starts to become a little bit more B&M shaped here. Uh, well, maybe that looks all right as an intimate. I, uh, anyone who, who's studied this fairly well knows that uh, B&Ms tend to be a little bit uh, more uh, parabolic looking than intimates do. Intimates tend to look more round, even though they are parabolic as well, as far as I know. And it's really just about how much time we have coming up into the uh, transition from positive to negative. And I'm also going to make this a little bit longer, 1.2. Let's make this a little bit shorter. So we've got basically an intimate airtime hill there. It goes a little bit too long, so I'm just going to take it down to about right there. Append again. And you'll notice I'm making these transitions longer than one second. Uh, the, the reason is because this coaster that I built is about uh, 200 some feet tall and it's going 74 miles an hour right here. So uh, you want to, this is something that's more of an art than a science. I guess we could kind of, uh, someone could come up with a graph or a chart or something that details how much time you should transition between uh, elements. But I think it really, like I said, it's more of an art than a science. It's just something that you can work out. Uh, just by riding it <clears throat> so if we go over the top here you can just see does it feel smooth when you see the transition or is it 
really just too abrupt. And another thing that you might want to look into when you're doing that is to, especially when you're first getting used to this, is to uh, import this into No Limits and take a ride on it to see what it, it rides like because the way it looks right now riding in No Limits or in FVD is quite a bit different than how it's actually going to look when you're riding it with the noise and, and the scenery going by and so forth. So uh, until you get the hang of it, that's one thing you can do. Just decrease this just a little bit. Actually, let's make it 2.05. Alright, there we go. So that's pretty much very intimate looking, I think. Let's make a B and M airtime hill. And and to do a bunny hill or anything like this, it's a, the same thing over and over and over. I'll show you. Let's do a really short bunny hill right here. So we've got the positive section. We're gonna append. Make it about 1.2 because of the speed we're going right here. And just take it down again. So you can choose any sort of uh, airtime you want. If you want a floater, go to about zero. You see right here we're at zero. Or go just a little bit below. I usually go just a little bit below to a floater. So it's about negative 0.2. Uh, and you see that's really high. So if we... This would be something that you would find more probably on, say, maybe Millennium Force. I don't know what the forces measure on that ride. I think it's more than that, actually. It's got some nice airtime, though. Good, nice and fun. So you see that was a little bit tall. So instead, let's bring it down some more. We can make it much shorter right here. So we've got the transition. And now, obviously, something like this at this speed, because it's going 80 miles an hour right here or 70 miles an hour you see right here. It's not gonna have a long section of airtime just because we don't have that much room before we have to start going up into the positive G's again. So let's go 1.2 and just increase this again to about 3.5. And what you can do here is if you think, you can always just play around with it a little bit to get the symmetry right. If we click back right here on the actual airtime moment, just make it a little bit longer. There we go. And so there we've got just a tiny little bump of air time. And you can see when we go over it right here, you see the vertical acceleration change. And because we stretch it out to 1.2, it, it seems pretty smooth right there. So let's go ahead and do one that looks like B&M. B&M tends to make the positive portion. So what are we going up to here? Whoops. All right, so what B&M does is make their the positive section a little bit longer and it results in more of that parabolic look, even though both of these are parabolic. Because just remember, a parabola is just the way uh, the graph that an object makes when it's actually falling. So uh, that is pretty much the definition of airtime. It's what actual falling would feel like. So let's take this down to, whoops. Move this over here, take this down. And BM obviously also does not generally do ejector air. So I'm going to take this down again to about negative 0.2. And then just make this a little bit shorter. Make this a little bit longer. And this looks like a very <clears throat> bizarre version of a B&M airtime hill, but let's just take this down a little bit and we'll start to get more of that classic. You can see already you're starting to get a little bit more of that classic pointed sort of B&M. Obviously this is an extreme example. Let's go down about 4.5. Let's try. And one other thing you can do is instead of taking this to zero, I do this sometimes. Or instead of taking this to point 0.2, let's take this up to zero. And then, let me get this off of here. The lateral forces, since we're not using those at all. Actually, let's take this down a little bit. And one thing I like to do is make this quartic instead of cubic. Especially if you've got a really rounded top, you can. This is another way you can do this. I'll show you. Let's do this, and then you've made this quartic. And if you make it go down just a little bit, you can make it a little bit more pointy too. 
Oops. And that gives it a little bit more of a B&M feel. feel. I'm gonna pen one more time. So that's not 100% perfect uh, B&M uh, Airtime Hill, but it looks similar to what you would find on a B&M somewhat. Uh, and I can fool around with it some more, but that gives you an idea of how to do it. You just basically, you can certainly see it's much more pointed than this one is. This one looks more Intamin-esque, and this one looks a little bit more B&M-esque. And you can just fool around with it some more to get the what you want there. And of course, you can fool around with the tension and the center as always as well. <clears throat> so that's pretty basic. Uh, we did three different types here. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's really not too much to making an airtime hill. It's pretty simple to do an FVD. I will go ahead and uh, attach a link to this file in the description as always. And if there is anything you want to see in FVD that we haven't covered so far in the series, just let me know. I'll be happy to give it a try. Uh, but that's going to be it for this episode. Take care and enjoy the ride.